Hi friends, it's Pastor Haley, and this is Simply Scripture, where we are reading through the Bible in one year. Today is day 125, and we are in Ezra chapter 5 through 7. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be in your word together. Change our hearts, change our minds, change and transform us from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ezra chapter 5. Now Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet, a descendant of Edo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, son of Zodadak, set to work to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. At that time, Tadani, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Bozani, and their associates went to them and asked, who authorized you to rebuild this temple and to finish it? They also ask, What are the names of those who are constructing this building? But the eye of their God was watching over the elders of the Jews, and they were not stopped until a report could go to Darius and his written reply be received. This is a copy of the letter that Tatani, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Bozani, and their associates, the officials of Trans-Euphrates, sent to King Darius. The report they sent him read as follows. To King Darius, cordial greetings. The king should know that we went to the district of Judah, to the temple of the great God. The people are building it with large stones and placing the timbers in the walls. The work is being carried on with diligence and is making rapid progress under their direction. We questioned the elders and asked them, Who authorized you to rebuild this temple and to finish it? We also asked them their names so that we could write down the names of their leaders for your information. This is the answer they gave us. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, one that a great king of Israel built and finished. Not because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar the Chaldean, king of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babylon. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to rebuild this house of God, He even removed from the temple of Babylon the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to the temple in Babylon. Then King Cyrus gave them to a man named Sheshbazar, whom he had appointed governor, and he told him, Take these articles and go and deposit them in the temple of Jerusalem and rebuild the house of God on its site. So this Sheshbar came and laid the foundation of the house of God in Jerusalem. From that day to the present, it has been under construction, but is not yet finished. Now that pleases the king, let a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to see if King Cyrus did in fact issue a decree to rebuild this house of God in Jerusalem. Then let the king send us his decision in this matter. Ezra 6. King Darius then issued an order, and they searched in the archives stored in the treasury of Babylon, A scroll was found in the citadel of Akbatana in the province of Media, and this was written on it. Memorandum. In the first year of King Cyrus, the king issued a decree concerning the temple of God in Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt as a place to present sacrifices, and let its foundations be laid. It is to be 60 cubits high and 60 cubits wide, with three courses of large stones and one of timbers. The costs are to be paid by the royal treasury. Also the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, are to be returned to their places in the temple in Jerusalem. They are to be deposited in the house of God. Now then, Tatani, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Bozani, and you other officials of that province, stay away from there. Do not interfere with the work on this temple of God. Let the governor of the Jews and the Jewish elders rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I hereby decree what you are to do for these elders of the Jews in the construction of this house of God. Their expenses are to be fully paid out of the royal treasury from the revenues of trans-Euphrates so that the work will not stop. Whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, male lambs for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, and wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil, as requested by the priest in Jerusalem, must be given them daily without fail, so that they may offer sacrifices pleasing to the God of heaven and pray for the well-being of the king and his sons. Furthermore, I decree that if anyone defies this edict 
a beam is to be pulled from their house and they are to be impaled on it. And for this crime, their house is to be made a pile of rubble. May God, who has caused his name to dwell there, overthrow any king or people who lifts a hand to change this decree or to destroy this temple in Jerusalem. I, Darius, have decreed it. Let it be carried out with diligence. Then, because of the decree King Darius had sent, Tatani, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Balzani and their associates carried it out with diligence. So the elders of the Jews continued to, to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah, a descendant of Edo. They finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. The temple was completed on the third day of the month, Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered a hundred bulls, 200 rams, 400 male lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And they installed the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their groups for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. On the 14th day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and Levites had purified themselves and were ceremonially clean. The Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their relatives, the priests, and for themselves. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it, together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For seven days they celebrated with joy the festival of unleavened bread, because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria, so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. Ezra 7. After these things, during the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, son of Sariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Merioth, the son of Zerariah, the son of Uzi, the son of Buki, the son of Abishu, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher well-versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. The king had granted him everything he asked, for the hand of the Lord his God was on him. Some of the Israelites, including priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants, also came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king, he had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month, and he arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month, for the gracious hand of his God was on him. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. This is a copy of the letter King Artaxerxes had given to Ezra the priest, a teacher of the law, a man learned in matters concerning the commands and decrees of the Lord for Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, teacher of the law of the God of heaven. Greetings. Now I decree that any of the Israelites in my kingdom, including priests and Levites, who volunteer to go to Jerusalem with you, may go. You are sent by the king and his seven advisors to inquire about Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand. Moreover, you are to take with you the silver and gold that the king and his advisors have freely given to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem. Together with all the silver and gold you may obtain from the province of Babylon, as well as the freewill offerings of the people and priests for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. With this money, be sure to buy bulls, rams, and male lambs, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, and sacrifice them on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem." You and your fellow Israelites may then do whatever seems best with the rest of the silver and gold in accordance with the will of your God. Deliver to the God of Jerusalem all the articles entrusted to you for worship in the temple of your God and anything else needed for the temple of your God that you are responsible to supply, you may provide from the royal treasury. 
Now I, King Artaxerxes, decree that all the treasuries of trans-Euphrates are to provide with diligence whatever Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law of the God of heaven, may ask of you, up to a hundred talents of silver, a hundred cores of wheat, a hundred baths of wine, a hundred baths of olive oil, and salt without limit. Whatever the God of heaven has prescribed, let it be done with diligence for the temple of the God of heaven. Why should this wrath fall on the realm of the king and his sons? You are also to know that you have no authority to impose taxes, tribute, or duty on any of the priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, temple servants, or other workers at this house of God. And you, Ezra, in accordance with the wisdom of your God, which you possess, appoint magistrates and judges to administer justice to all the people of trans-Euphrates, all who know the laws of your God, and you are to teach any who do not know them. Whoever does not obey the law of your God and the law of the king must surely be punished by death, banishment, confiscation of property, or imprisonment. Praise be to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, who was put into the king's heart to bring honor to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem in this way, and who has extended his good favor to me before the king and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials. Because the hand of the Lord my God was on me, I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. Thanks for listening. Come back tomorrow for the rest of Ezra.